Hi, this is Michael. I'd just like to give you a rundown on the helicopter version of the uh, power unit uh, put out by RCC SKJ and also distributed by Austra Ostar Models Australia. Uh, this unit is primarily used for uh, helicopter use. Uh, it's basically just a dual battery backup. Uh, it's there to supply stable voltage, stable uh, current to, uh, your, to the servos and also uh, a uh, supply to the receiver as well. Uh, it has a couple of uh, features in the unit. Heat sink here. Uh, the difference between this one and the aircraft one, uh, I'll show you right here, is the heat sink itself. The helicopter one is the red, and then we have the blue heat sink indicates the one for the aircraft. The unit itself has a uh, LED uh, display and also uh, adjustment here for the servo output voltage. Uh, the actual receiver voltage on this unit stays at 5.2. It's already preset. Uh, the helicopter one, when you adjusted the servo output voltage, it would also adjust the voltage to the actual receiver. So you could get a fluctuation uh, of anywhere up to uh, 9 volts if you weren't careful to the actual receiver, where this unit has a stable voltage set at 5.2 uh, two volts. On the back, you'll just notice a little bit of a, an indent here. That there is for adjusting the low voltage alarm, so that if your voltage was to drop below whatever setting you want to have, uh, say you're using 6.6 .6 LIFEs, uh, which I'll be using for the demonstration, and the voltage drops below uh, 5 volts, you set the under voltage below 5 volts, uh, what it'll do, it'll actually trip off an alarm, there's an alarm built into the unit, and with the optional extra as well of a little LED light to give you a warning, visual indication too that there's a problem. Once that voltage drops down to that point, it will then set the alarm off and uh, give you an indication that there is a problem with the, one of the batteries or some part of the circuitry uh, that's been supplied power. There is a standard switch as you can see here uh, that on-off switch plugs into uh, the unit itself and can be pulled uh, dis disconnected if need be and uh, as I said there's a LED that you can plug into this part of the unit here and it just plugs in it's got a little tab on there uh, JR type tab uh, sorry Futaba type tab and it just plugs in there, you can put that anywhere on your aircraft just to give you a visual indication that there is a, a problem. Dean's connectors, two power inputs. Uh, you can change those over if need be to whatever your, your preference is. Uh, as I said this is basically uh, backup uh, redundancy so if one battery is to fail the unit kicks in straight away and takes over with the other battery so there's no problem there at all. The other thing with the unit is that if for any reason your, your switch was to fail, to pull out of its socket or whatever, uh, the unit itself would then uh, still go to like a fail safe mode and keep, uh, continue operating. What I'll do now, I'll just go through a bit of a brief rundown on how to set the unit itself up. Uh, first thing I would do would be to plug in a voltmeter. I always just like to make sure that the voltage to the receiver that I'm going to plug in is uh, roughly around about 5 volts, 5.2 volts thereabouts before I start putting power on. Using two uh, LIFEs, 6.6 .6 LIFEs, just for, for uh, testing purposes. Uh, my preference would be to use 6.6 uh, .6 LIFEs or uh, even 3 cell LIFEs up to about 9.6 volts thereabouts uh, or you could even use uh, 7.4 um, LIPOs if, if need be. So we have the batteries connected in to the unit. Turn the unit on and what I'll do also is just check with the multimeter connected up make sure our voltage is okay to the actual uh, receiver. And what we're getting is 5.2, 5.25 thereabouts. So we know that the voltage to the receiver is all okay. 
So that's what our voltage is to the receiver. But if you notice also on our display we're getting a little yellow light at the top, another little yellow light where they alternate between the two. We have 6.6 .6 volts for the input power from these two batteries here. And then we have when it uh, moves up, we have 5.27 to the actual servos. So even though we're getting 5.25 to the receiver, that can't be adjusted up or down. It stays as it's set. But the actual voltage output, which is coming up now, 5.27 can be adjusted. And if I was to get this little screwdriver here and go to the adjuster, wind that up, we now have 5.3. As we come back around, it just alternates between 5.33. So we know that um, our voltage to our actual receiver, as you can see, is 5.2. The voltage to the servos is 5.33 or thereabouts. Turn the unit off, you know everything's all okay. Disconnect the multimeter, then we just connect up our receiver. Make sure when you're connecting the receiver that you have your standard um, leads here with the three wires connected to the lead that's the supply power to the actual receiver now depending on how you hook up your receiver uh, with your uh, gyro the gyro would go between the receiver and the unit so the gyro is between the receiver and the unit itself plug in our receiver then because we uh, we're only operating, we need the signal from the receiver, we don't need to actually have uh, the power going back to the surveys because this unit's handling the power. We can just plug in the a signal line itself. You can use your standard three wide leads if you wanted to, but uh, just for uh, a little bit of ease and uh, make things a little bit tidier, I'll just use these three signal lines going in, make sure we get our wires at the top, our signal wires go to the top, make sure we get the colours right, only reason being that uh, from the receiver to the unit we don't want to cross them over to operate the incorrect surveys, that's all we, the only issue to get there. So there we have the receiver connected in, as I said in between here you would have your gyro connected in there between one of these here, depending on how you have your unit set up, between these four would be the gyro connected in. Then what we do is connect our servos in. One, and for this purpose we'll just plug the two in. Just be mindful of the fact that we have four inputs from the receiver, one, two, three, four, and then four outputs to the servos, one, two, three, four there, then our switch. So the first four from the left going to the right are receiver uh, outputs, sorry, inputs into the unit, and then we have our four outputs to the servos, these, these two, uh, four here. Okay, so we've got power to it. Turn the power on. Transmitter on. And then we have our servo working. Now if for any reason we were to have a battery failure, and I'll connect our little LED in as well. This unit will kick in straight away and uh, will continue to operate. So disconnect the battery. Power is still going, everything's still working. If for any reason the switch was to fail, switch comes out, unit still works. So everything's still, still working fine. So that's a bit of redundancy we've got for batteries failing or a switch, you know, in a, uh, in a model, vibration might take over and the switch might, may, uh, may fail uh, during flight. So it fails to safe which is a, a good feature. To set the actual low voltage 
what you need to do, turn the unit over, there's a little button on the back, you can just make it out here, and you hold that unit down, so, there we have it, we actually have U, which means under voltage, and we have 5 volts, so that's what it would trip off at. Now, when you set it, leave the unit on, until it sets itself if you turn the unit off, set that under voltage and turn the unit off, it won't uh, set, the volt, set the under voltage uh, straight away and you'll actually get an alarm when you go to turn the unit back on. So, turn the unit off, everything's fine. So, as I said, a couple of nice uh, little features to it, very compact, I think it's about 60mm long, about 40mm wide, and uh, you're looking around about uh, 20 mil deep, so it's quite quite compact. Uh, weighs about 65 grams thereabouts. Uh, so not a bad unit, and like I said, uh, would be good for medium-sized helicopters uh, and the and the like. Uh, if for any reason, uh, like I said, you, you wanted to operate more channels, you could either use two of these together and have two lots of batteries, or connect your batteries all into to the one. Or what you can do is uh, you have your main functions that, that require a lot of power going through this unit through the unit here and uh, the rest of them you know just uh, servos or, or operations that don't require too much uh, uh, current or, too, or don't put too much drain on the system you can have them plugged straight into your receiver for the rest of the, the other channels so it's pretty straightforward like I said it's uh, not a bad little unit and I think it would uh, go fairly well in any standard size helicopter. Thank you.